GG my dude, you just got a sick clip in your game or on Twitch and you already know that directly uploading the clip to TikTok for example is just not gonna cut it today and you understand that for people to find you and stay with you, you need to make it look more interesting. Wait, this is interesting. With platforms like TikTok, we now have potentially unlimited reach and unlimited chances to grab people's attention. But what is also so great about TikTok that it introduced the world to what we know as vertical clips. The best thing about vertical clips is that even though you just have to create one clip, you can then upload that clip to all three major platforms. I mean, TikTok, Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. And so editing my clips in the same way I'm about to show you, I got over 6,000 views on my second ever post on TikTok and over 8,000 views on my first post on Instagram Reels. That's over 14,000 new eyes and new potential followers with literally just 10 minutes of work. And so why don't we start by adding some personality to your clip? Uh, but first, can you just hit that like button for me? It would help out a lot. Thanks. All right, so I magically have a different chair now <laughs> and it's a different day as well, but I'm gonna use Adobe Premiere Pro for this. You can use obviously whatever software you want. It doesn't really matter. All you need to do is follow the same steps as I do. And at first we're not going to change to vertical uh, format. We're instead going to use the default 16 by nine format. This is going to be important later. So just follow me. So here I have a pretty standard clip of me getting some nice kills in CSGO. Uh, nothing special really, but it fits the video well, since I have a nice reaction here as well. What? Okay, great. The key thing that we need to add to make our clip more engaging, we need to add subtitles. This is one of my favorite things to do with clips, as it adds a lot of personality to the clip and makes it just a lot more engaging and more interesting to watch. So right here, what? where I'm saying what? what? <laughs> In this belief, I'm going to add some text. So make it shorter to fit. So the font is looking pretty basic right now. So obviously I'm gonna change that. I use passion one almost all the time. Uh, I'm gonna make it bigger, of course, just to position again. And to make the text uh, pop out a little bit more, I'm gonna add an outline and make it about 40 pixels wide. I think I can go for even bigger here. Yep, I think that's fine. So now that we have the text on the screen, we can make it look even more interesting and more, you know, innovative. I'm gonna do that by adding some uh, keystrokes to the scale uh, right at the beginning of the text sequence to make it pop a little bit. And so to do that, let's make a keystroke right here at the start at 100 scale, then go forward two keystrokes and up the scale to 115, and then go forward one more keystroke and then go down back to 110. So now when we take a look, maybe we can even make it smoother by e easing it out. So let's see. What? So that's pretty cool already. So we have three more places we need to add text. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do those now. So here you can hear my teammate uh, speak. To make sure that the viewer sees the difference between you and somebody else talking, you should use some other color. What I like to do is find out what color my teammate was in CSGO and use the same color right now. I cannot tell, so I'm gonna use purple. All right, so let's check this out. Okay, what? Okay, green. What happened? Looks pretty good. But now other thing we need to add is a zoom in to see my reaction. And so for this, let's cut the uh, clip what? somewhere around here, right before my disbelief. What? And just use the scale to zoom in. I think this is good enough. And I think after this, I can zoom out again. All right, and the finished product looks like this. What? Okay, Green. What happened? 
And now the reason we didn't edit this in vertical format first is because this is already ready to go and you can put this in, for example, your YouTube compilation, your Frax compilation, montage, whatever. You can use it pretty much everywhere. Because the thing is, once you edit this in vertical, then you can't really go back to 16 by 9. So we want to save the 16 by 9 resolution clip separately. For now, let's just export this clip and then we can move on to the TikTok edition. This is a really important part as well. You want to use H.264 format. Uh, make sure it's 60 FPS. Uh, render at maximum depth and then in bitrate settings make sure the bitrate encoding is uh, VBR one pass uh, You can use two pass as well But this is just gonna take uh, twice as much as time to export and it doesn't really add that much And this is the crucial part. I see so many people use as high maximum bitrate as possible And this is useless. Do not do that when exporting then maximum you want to use is 15 bitrate when you're doing it in uh, 1080p because first of all this is what YouTube accepts so if you're trying to go as high as possible in bitrate then it's YouTube is just going to compress it down to 15 again and because YouTube has to do so much compression the final product will look so much worse than if it would if you just put 15 here. So stick to 15. I'm gonna use 12 because this is recommended for platforms like Instagram. And here check use maximum render quality and then you're ready to export. So now we can start a new project but this time it's gonna be in vertical format. So first I'm gonna drag the clip we just edited in, back in Premiere Pro and I'm gonna change the sequence settings. So we want to invert the frame size 1080 by 1920 so now we just need to scale this down a little bit and it's going to look a little bit something like this and now to actually make this look professional what we're gonna do is a sneaky little trick that i use drag your current clip up one layer and then duplicate that clip and the duplicated clip down below you're going to make a lot larger so about 180 in scale then go down to effects uh, find blur grab Gaussian Blur, drag this onto the first layer and feel free to add a lot of blur, about 200 should be fine. Repeat edge pixels and now you can see we have a nice smooth background that syncs with the clip as well. It's exactly enough to make your eyes relax. Now we're pretty much ready to go for TikTok but the last thing we need to add is some sort of a call to action. So we want to promote our Twitch channel for example or even our YouTube, Instagram, whatever it is. We want to add a short, a little under a second, like a pop-up or something that shows our Twitch name for example. And so for this first I'm going to add a Twitch logo and I'm also gonna add a text with my Twitch channel name. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit to make it look nicer. So now our clip is actually distracting our pop-up. So what we need to do is add another blur in the background. So underneath my text and my logo, I'm gonna add another track. We're going to add an adjustment layer. And in that adjustment layer, we're going to add another blur. Make that 200 as well. And that's perfect. So now again, what we need to do is make it pop a little bit and then quickly go away as well. So first I'm gonna make the text pop a little bit and for this we need to play around with the scale again. So at the start I'm gonna have it at 50 scale, then a couple frames further I'm gonna up this to uh, let's say 95 and then throughout this clip it's gonna go up to 100 slowly. So we can see it's, it's popping. It's a little bit too quick, maybe something like this. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then also, once this pop-up is done, I want this that I want the text to just go down away. So add another keyframe for position, go a couple of frames further, and then make it go away, just like this. And you know, to add a little taste, I'm gonna play with opacity as well. So right when it pops, we can have 100 opacity, but at the beginning, we're gonna bring it down to zero, just like this. And towards the end, we're gonna make it disappear as well. Yeah, this is good. Now what's left to do is to sync the Twitch logo and the blur with the text, so they both just go down at the same time. So we have our pop-up for our Twitch channel, and you know one last thing i'm gonna add to here is a swish sound effect for when the when the pop-up goes down so 
So something like this. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. I can make it a lot quieter though. Yeah, I think that's perfect. So this looks really good for me. I'm ready to export. Remember to export it with the same rules about bitrate. Uh, everything else, you know, pretty much the same. Render at maximum depth. Uh, use maximum render quality, of course, and then go and export. I hope you learned something new about editing your clips to make them look more interesting and engaging. So my advice here is go crazy with the clips if you want to see some insane growth on your social media. By the way, if you're looking for something good and reliable for clipping your gaming highlights, then check out this video here. Other than that, that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And as always, GG.